Good morning, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for the 20th of June, 2017. A lot to go over this morning. This is the track map from the National Hurricane Center on the potential tropical cyclone, uh, probably soon to be upgraded to Tropical Storm Cindy in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see the general uh, wind extent is to the east of the center here and the center located over the central gulf at almost 25 north and 90 degrees west longitude with a forecast of the center position bringing it in over the Sabine River the mouth of the Sabine, the Texas-Louisiana border in uh, a couple of days uh, in the overnight hours more than likely um, Wednesday night into Thursday and then tracking up into parts of the Arkansas, Tennessee region, maybe with some very heavy rain across this area. We'll just have to wait and see how all of that plays out. If we go back to the main page here of the Hurricane Center, I want to show you also what's happening out here with Tropical Storm Brett. You remember this from yesterday being upgraded. Fairly small system. It has moved through the southern Windward Islands now on a track to the west-northwest, still fairly briskly at over 20 miles per hour. And this will likely cross the Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao region later today, just skirting north of the coast of Venezuela. And then due to strong upper-level winds, it should start to fizzle and dissipate later on in the period by Tuesday, just a rem or Thursday, pardon me, just a remnant, remnant low-pressure area. Looking at the unenhanced black-and-white satellite imagery, uh, basically, this is an infrared shot, but it's not colorized like we're used to seeing. I like this because it still shows me some details. For example, you can see here with our area, formerly known as Invest 93L, now almost Tropical Storm Cindy is what I like to refer to it as, but officially potential Tropical Cyclone number 3. And the low-pressure area, you can see pretty easily right in here, low-level clouds exposed on the west side due to strong upper-level winds coming around from this upper trough off to its west. And if that relaxes, then this could ramp up uh, enough to become a little bit more of a concern than it is now. Basically just a rainmaker. I say just. Believe me, some of that could be heavy. But if this gets into, an, uh, into a favorable area as it approaches the coast up here, it has an opportunity to strengthen some, I do believe. Meanwhile, here's Brett out here. Again, just skimming along north of Venezuela. And as I mentioned, those upper-level winds coming out of the south will eventually take the toll on the system and weaken it. The visible satellite animation of Brett shows that pretty well already. You can see uh, sort of a disruption of the overall cloud mass. Uh, not as organized as it was yesterday through last night. Center of circulation probably in here now. And the inflow coming off the continent of South America going to disrupt some of that uh, mechanism to keep this engine going as well. And you folks here in the windwards, starting with Barbados out here, it's only a matter of time that all this cloud cover and nasty weather will clear your area, that you'll have a great rest of your Tuesday ahead. Looking in the Gulf of Mexico, again, a close-up, the floater imagery, and you can see that center of circulation somewhere in here, pretty much void of any convection on this west side uh, due to that upper-level trough that's sitting over here. Uh, imposing strong southerly to southwesterly flow. If this were to let up enough, uh, and we can see that here on the product from the University of Wisconsin site, there is that upper level low and the trough of low pressure uh, to the west there putting the wind shear. If this backs away and this anticyclonic flow that's centered over the Yucatan expands north and west enough, then this could become more than just, oh, it's a rainmaker. Uh, and already it's going to have some significant wave heights due to the fetch of water, of wind over the water that is, piling up that water against the coastline uh, with that easterly flow. And uh, as this comes up, that will switch out to the south. And so this is not something to just dismiss. If we look at the vorticity signature, you can see it's nice and round, indicating it's starting to get better organized. And there's Brett down there. This will begin to lose its vorticity signature as it moves off to the west-northwest and begins to dissipate under those adverse conditions waiting for it. Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures plenty warm uh, throughout this region uh, for a hurricane to develop, but it's the upper-level winds that are hindering it right now. 
And I think that's the key here. If those upper level winds abate, then these 82 degree water temperatures in here, indicated by the greens, would be enough for this to ramp up to maybe a 50 mile per hour tropical storm, if not more. Um, that, would, that wouldn't surprise me. You have to remember intensity forecasting is where there is the least amount of skill among hurricane forecasters. The ocean heat content in the Gulf of Mexico, still at the low end of the scale over here, which is good. We don't see any of these oranges and reds and even whites. That's more confined to the Caribbean. But there's enough of upper ocean heat content, that is to say where the warm water extends below the ocean surface enough, in this case the Gulf of Mexico, to provide more warm water even as it's churned up as this thing moves along. Looking at the GFS from this morning's run, the 6Z run, I want to point this out to you. You can see the low pressure area here coming out of the Gulf, uh, a rain shield associated with it. I'm drawing in green. Let's use yellow. That'll be easier to see. You know, really heavy rainfall there along portions of the central Gulf Coast. But otherwise, this isn't quite as a classic looking system. You can see when it starts there, sort of sheds this piece of energy. Maybe it's the GFS model handing energy off. It could be, you know, a bad run. It's hard to say. This just doesn't look like a well wrapped up system. And that's good news, you know, for folks along the immediate coast who don't want to deal with higher winds and surge. Uh, so we'll have to see if this changes over time, uh, if the GFS model is having some kind of an error with some of this convective activity separating. Uh, but you see, in the end, it brings it in uh, right near the Texas-Louisiana line here. Uh, and that time frame, here's 24 hours out right there. And then it comes in again Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. So finally, by early in the hour, uh, morning hours of Thursday, this would be inland over southwest Louisiana or perhaps um, somewhere over the upper Texas coastline. What's going to happen in your area? I wanted to point this out to you. You go to weather.gov, weather.gov, put in your city, and in this case I'll put in Gulfport, Mississippi. As an example, you can do your zip code as well. And this will give you the local information for that area. And not just the forecast you know, for the next few days, but this right here, the hurricane local statement. When you get there, for your area, you click on it, and then it's all right here. Everything you need to know outlined, including right here, and this is very important, the potential impacts from the surge, flooding, rain, and wind. And this is for your specific area. Very, very important tool. I hope you take advantage of it. Weather.gov. You can put in your zip code uh, right in here. This box up on the upper left, or just type in your city and state. And the return page will give you plenty of information that can be very helpful. I'm going to be hitting the road in just a little while to drive to the Central Gulf Coast. Part of the work I do at HurricaneTrack.com and our Hurricane Intercept Research Team is to set up equipment and report from the area. Um, there's always stuff to test and make sure it's going to run for the real big events that come later. The more substantial hurricanes that may be coming, you never know. Um, and it's important. All of these storms matter, even if they're quote-unquote weak. I want to make sure we get out there and report what we see and do an accurate job of doing so as well. And I'll be posting some video blogs for you in Hurricane Pro and HD throughout the trip. All right? So check that out. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com and for Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll talk to you next from the road.